Welcome to show 41 of the Cloth Diaper Podcast. Today's episode is with Stacey Reason, and we are going to be chatting about her experience cloth diapering in Germany. The Cloth Diaper Podcast is a somewhat regular show dedicated to everything cloth diapering. We talk with cloth diaper parents, brands, and retailers from around the world about their cloth diapering experience. Hello, my name is Bailey, and I am the host of the Cloth Ever Podcast. Who is the stranger on the other side of the mic? Uh, well, if you haven't been listening for the last 40 episodes, then you don't know I am a Cloth Ever Mom of Two, a former Cloth Ever Mom of Two, as both of my kids have now potty trained. We're not even Cloth Ever anymore, but just because we're not Cloth Ever doesn't mean we can't talk about the stories and the journey of Cloth Ever. I started the Cloth Ever Podcast as a way to start sharing other stories, other versions of the stories. Um, and to expand the narrative because cloth diapering isn't just one experience, it's many experiences. And it's not just my experience, it's the experience of many other people. And so today's episode is really special to my heart because we're going to be talking about a different experience. We're going to be talking about an experience outside of North America and um, how that might differ. Um, I'm I think it's a good opportunity to pause and stop and think about how cloth I bring the narrative that we say isn't always the best narrative. How is the we have to do it this way or the highway approach actually really damaging to the larger cloth diaper journey. As we hit 2020, I think it's important to begin to realize that cloth diapering is a global phenomenon. And the experiences that we're having here in North America around cloth diapering aren't necessarily the same experiences that we're having around the world. And we need to come up with a cloth diaper rhetoric that is inclusive, that is flexible, and that can transition around the world depending on your unique situations. Because this idea that we have all the North American centered information is, uh, it's not, it's not awesome. And I'm, I think in many ways, if we embrace a global conversation on cloth diapering, that we can help people everywhere. Um, there are a lot of really interesting things going on and around the world about cloth diapering and how they cloth diaper that if we applied them to North America might make cloth diapering less scary and a lot easier. If you are somebody who listens to the show from another part of the world and your cloth diapering experience is different, please don't hesitate to drop into my inbox. If you don't want to have a conversation on the show because you're absolutely terrified of a phone call, then you can also send me your story via written text. I do take uh, cloth diaper blogcast blog posts. Blah. I'm recording this. I haven't had enough coffee yet this morning. So you can uh, write down your thoughts and you can share them on the Cloth Labor Podcast. But first, a quick ad. I'm just popping in to remind you that Cloth Labor Podcast is a partner with Humbert. Humbert is a German-based cloth diaper brand. She manufactures or specializes in wool. And this episode will be releasing at the end of February, which gives you lots of time to think about. Well, actually, it doesn't give you lots of time. It gives you just a few days to think about the March pre-order. Humbert Wool pre-orders start at the beginning of each month, run for the first week from the 1st through the 7th. It gives you an opportunity to get wool. Yeah. If you want to learn more about the entire Humbert Wool purchasing process, say that 10 times fast, check out the episode from last November, November 2018 with Humbert, and that will give you some more insight or come follow me on Instagram and see what March's pre-orders will be like. Pre-orders happen every month, and you can purchase Humbird Wool at humbird.eu. So without further ado, I think we've had a long enough introduction. I'm going to introduce Stacey Reason for our show 41 of the Cloth Diaper Podcast. If you want to find the show notes for this episode, again, you can always find them at clothdiaperpodcast.com. Lots of great information over there, as well as hunt me down on the web for more cloth diapering conversations on Instagram, Facebook, um, and that's about it. All right, here we go. Your name is Stacy, and you're in Germany. Why are you in Germany? Um, because my husband is German, and we decided um, about a year and a half ago to move here to um, – he, he took a job here, and I decided to leave a, um, a kind of passion job that I was really passionate about, but it was with a nonprofit and didn't pay very well, so it wasn't – didn't make sense for our family 
family um, situation. At the time, I just had a six-month-old baby, and so we did some family moves. So we ended up in Germany. Oh, well, there you go. That, well, that's an yeah. adventure and a half. Uh, I'm from Texas, but I um, spent plus years in Kentucky, so Kentucky is okay. kind of my new home now. My parents moved back to Kentucky as well, so <sighs> Texas, Kentucky. Okay, so mid somewhere in the middle of the United States, uh, and now you're in Germany, and you have one kid or two kids? We have two now. Our second son is four months old, and our first is two years old. Okay, did you start cloth diapering with your first, or with your second? I, uh, when my first was born, before he was born, I had. Uh, kind of heard about cloth diapers and wanted to get into it and even registered for a few on my, for my baby shower and even got a couple. Um, but at the time I was, um, working and I went back to work full time pretty quickly at, um, eight weeks postpartum. And, um, it was just really a rough, um, kind of jolt into motherhood and anyway long story short I just never got really the confidence to explore it fully so I never got the chance to do it with my first son from the beginning but when we moved to Germany I found my I had a lot more time because I started doing um, kind of the stay-at-home mom thing so I kind of started to look into it also because Germany is such a um, eco-friendly culture there was just so much more um, conversation and accessibility to cloth diapering, like the com- like a community, and just just the conversation was more um, just what should I say, like standard or commonplace. Whereas in the states, I felt like it was a very niche kind of conversation. Like if you cloth diapered, it was a very like special kind of crunchy mom. And here in Germany, <laughs> it's much more commonplace. Okay, so <laughs> to cloth I hear diaper. you say that. And then I think about that email that you just sent me. Oh, what's going on? You just sent me an email this morning about how you ended up buying all your diapers from China, but you're finding that. So where does that, how does that? So, well, that was more of a personal choice. Oh, okay. Because, um, only because, uh, my husband's not really into the idea of cloth diapering. Um, he just does not like them, which is, I think, the, you know, the story that so many moms have. <laughs> of an, it was a huge deterrent, especially with my first one as well, kind of getting into the whole motherhood thing and not having a partner that was like really into the idea, like as much as I was. It was just like, okay, well, let's just kind of off the list to make life more easy. So when I started, when I came to Germany, I had more time. I was starting to think about this again. And I wanted, you know, I started thinking about building a stash because I literally had just two cloth diapers. Um, that I, my biggest thing was to go the cheapest route. Okay. And on, so if you order them direct from China, you can get them. I mean, I think I spent like the most with like four euros on one conversation. The uh, support kind of like the attitude that you, I don't know, kind of need to have as far as like commitment. I mean, because it is more of a commitment because it's more work. Um, So just, and and the more access to information about how to wash them and all the different kinds there are. I mean, I see different brands and styles of cloth diaper here in Germany that I don't see in the, in the U S or anywhere else. Um, Mm -hmm. Especially when I get into these like German cloth diaper um, Facebook groups, for example. And I mean, it just amazes me the, the, the kind of culture, cloth diaper culture that there is specifically here in Germany, um, that, you know, made me more comfortable to explore that. But on the same side, um, because it is so much more commonplace here, the resale market for cloth diapers in Germany is, I mean, just so expensive. I mean, (laughs) when I started looking into buying used, it was like maybe a couple of euros less than buying brand new. And Uh so then I was like, well, if I am not willing to spend 24 euros on one diaper, then I'm not also not willing to spend 19 euros on a used cloth diaper that's been used for two years. I mean, it's (laughs) it's really insane. Like the resale market in Germany I mean, it's just insane. Even still today, so like, that's, even as we're talking right now, 2020, 
Oh yeah. No, like, like I got in, like I got heavily in the cloth diaper, um, maybe right before, like when I was building really my primary stash, stash was right before my second son was born. So we're talking like five, six months ago, I started oh. buying this. And I was really looking at eBay and Facebook. Those are the two resale market places yeah. in uh, Germany. that are the most used and everywhere was just a couple of dollars off of retail price. And it just blew my mind. So, so I, you, you know, do you go to like, if you, do you go to mom groups? Like if you went to a mom group, would there be, would you be the lone one out if you were disposable diapering or would you? Uh, I, I would say like half, 50, 50, 50, 50, I would say 50%. Would There's a good chance that they'll be cloth diapering. Doing it or yeah, yeah. And and maybe even if they're not, that their attitude would just be supportive about it. Okay. Like and I found that in the US, like if you talk about cloth diapering, it's like you have like the diehard fanatic people that are like uh-huh. judge you if you don't cloth. And then there's like a few people that are like, I'm interested in cloth and I think it's a good idea. It's just not a good fit for my lifestyle. Yeah. And then there's 80% of the other people that are like cloth is ridiculous. Why would you touch a poopy diaper? <laughs> yeah. Or why? Like why, why, why? So at least here it's like, like way I find that it's much more common. And even if they don't do it themselves, just the attitude is like, I That's wish I could do that, but I don't do it because of whatever reason. Like, it's just, it's less of a... Polarized? Um, it's yeah. sounding like it's less polarized. Like, it's really, I mean, Americans are notably really good for polarizing things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and making it feel like we are in uh, competition with one another when we're really yeah. not or one of the main pillars of cloth diapering is environmental friendliness. And Mm -hmm. Germany is so diehard environmentally friendly that it is just, it's just so accepted that that would be a perfectly acceptable choice of how to diaper your child. Because I would resonate more to this German conversation that you're having than the American conversation, even though that American conversation happens in Canadian life as well when it comes to cloth diapering. But um, with maternity leave, being a bigger option in Germany versus the States. Mm-hmm. Do you think that helps ease some of this? Like, I mean, you started this conversation bringing up that your first child, you were kind of overwhelmed until you transitioned mm-hmm. to this stay at home mm-hmm. mom life. Mm-hmm. Does that, does that feel like a, something that might be, uh, makes it more feel accessible is just being able to have time off. I absolutely think that. I mean, for me, uh, I was already at home, so I can't say specifically that that would have an impact. But I think that in just in general, like that very long extended, um, I mean, 12 months is like the standard. Most people yeah. can, you can take longer and most people take around 12 months. Maybe I'd say probably between seven, 12 months is pretty average. Um, for how long a mom takes uh, takes maternity leave. So yeah, during that time, you have the time to focus on. For me, like I said, the first time, I just didn't have the bandwidth to think about it. Because in I, my opinion, cloth diapering has such a high... Um, such a high barrier mm-hmm. kind of entry like you have to learn a lot in the beginning you but to, once you know it it's like so stupid easy yeah you do have to have a good amount of um not education is not the right word either uh intellect isn't the right word you have to just to like yeah just the learning curve learning curve like yeah. it does the, yeah. that barrier of having to yeah. learn things yeah. Yeah. and if you don't if you only have six weeks off with your child yeah like <laughs> definitely yeah don't take that on right like motherhood is a challenge as it is in north america i would argue that the conversation around wash routines is intense um how do you find that transition into germany what is the conversation around wash routine and how would you how did you navigate coming with an american base of wash routines into germany where products machines life is a little bit different and what would you recommend that to somebody else who's maybe, because this, this expat conversation is one that I see a lot on the web, you know, people moving because of their military bases or 
families? Well, for when I first started researching, kind of re- like really, really researching cloth diapering, you know, like figuring out what kind of system I wanted to use because, um, you know, like all in ones, pockets, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. Um, I also, of course, at the time was looking at wash routines and all of the research I did because at the time my German wasn't very good and I just wasn't confident enough to like look yeah. on German resources. I was looking at all these um, American uh, U.S. sites, blogs, um, you know, retailers, websites, um, all, all of their recommended wash routines. Um, and so, but the washers are totally different than they are in Germany. So I kind of like got this idea of like, okay, this is how, this is what I should expect. I like made all these notes. And then when I tried to apply it to our German washer, it just wasn't working out very well because the, the, the machines just totally operate differently. I mean, we have a front loader, but even front loaders here are just, just different than front loaders in the U.S. because they just use so significant less water. To Italy when my son was six months, and I just can remember it being a, I didn't cloth diaper, but just like washing regular clothes was totally surprisingly different. So yeah. It's a funny like uh, story to put this into context. So when I first came to Germany um, uh, for an extended amount of time, I came here to learn German back when I was in college. Um, Mm -hmm. And anyway, I was staying with a friend and I just remember her telling me in like her broken English, um, like, yeah, you can wash your clothes here. And she showed me her like super tiny front load washing machine. It was so tiny. And she was like, it only takes two hours and then your clothes are clean. (laughs) And I was like, wait, what? Like, she was like, yeah, that's it. It's so easy. And then of course, you know, she doesn't have a dryer. So you have to, and then take your clothes and hang them outside if the weather is nice. But it was just like so funny because she was like, it only takes two hours. <laughs> anyway, so that's the kind of like major difference in like mindset and and everything. So um, sorry, that was like a side note, but I just like that that still like resonates with me whenever I think about washing clothes. Oh, the, this like, for example, the cycle I use after the rinse cycle, like the, the main wash cycle is two hours and 20 minutes. That's how long it takes that's to a, wash. That's so. astronomical in my experience. Because um, <laughs> like uh, as a as North American and recommending North American wash, I usually say like, your wash cycle is going to be like an hour. <laughs> right? So <laughs> two hours uh, is a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. And then, you know, it just like blows my mind when you think of like that this, this washer and this root, this wash uh, cycle is actually so much more efficient, even though it's like not time efficient, but it is, you know, in the amount of electricity used and in the amount of water it uses, it's so much more efficient. It just takes so much. Well, and obviously it's working because you're saying that a good portion of people out there are cloth diapering. So it's not, it's not a barrier. It's obviously not a barrier to making this work. Um, So what does your wash routine look like? So walk me through what you do on your machine. um, So I do a a rinse cycle first, which is a 30-minute cycle, which is the shortest cycle this machine runs. (laughs) And um, in... um, my for my rinse cycle because we have such hard water and we live in southern germany like really mm-hmm. close to nick and the water here is notorious for having such high mineral content which is really great for drinking but horrible for washing clothes and um so you know with cloth diapering you really have to worry about mineral buildup so um i did a whole bunch of research and um decided to use um kind of natural decalking um, decalcifying, um, substances as much as possible. So what I decided is I use either citric acid in powder form or vinegar, white vinegar. And so I just add citric acid, um, to the, uh, what compartment, the softener compartment and in cycle, it adds the citric acid to the water and acid will, does a cu- actually does a couple of things. First of all, it helps with a mineral deposit to block that. Second, it actually basically sterilizes both your machine and your cloth. And then third, because it um, is an acid, it actually acts as a, a natural brightener, like a bleacher. Mm. So my is that what you find to be like, pretty common amongst other people you know in your area? The use of if, citric acid. 
if you are cloth divering because you want to avoid the chemical kind of thing too, then you are also a mom that cares about avoiding chemicals in your clothing. And then you would also <laughs> find these ways as well. So I would say yes, more so, but I think I'm kind of like, I've kind of swung on this extreme, like trying to avoid all kind of chemical exposure. So like I definitely, I've briefly heard of citric acid being used like with diapering well, washing machines, but definitely like as this like underground black web <laughs> conversation. <laughs> um, it's a secret, but actually, I mean, it's just crazy because it, like it's, I feel like I'm going to get on a soapbox and get really passionate about it, but it works and it's cheap. I'll just leave it yeah. at that. Is it cheap? Well, that was my second question. As I Googled, I quickly Googled it here and I was okay. like, oh, but I wonder what the cost <laughs> is. What is my thought here? The cost of softeners can be quite expensive, can quite costly. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I see here, like that. it says on Amazon, a bag of citric acid in Canada is $10. For how much? A pound. For how much? Whoa, that's kind of expensive. Is it? Oh. Here in Germany, oh, like, I don't know, like 10 grams, like like a tiny, oh, like, like a, tablespoon. a tablespoon, two tablespoons. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that's nothing. So, Interesting. But, but here in Germany, citric acid is actually, it's kind of like, for example, borax. Like, yeah. people that use borax to clean would be considered kind of like crunchy green cleaners, like really? homemade cleaners, whatever. But I, I, I just as an example, but, um, but my point is borax is very readily available, I, okay. I think in the U S as far as, yeah. I can. and so citric acid is, is another thing. It's like, if you would replace borax with citric acid in the kind of like DIY cleaning household cleaning agent type it's like of super product, available. It's super available. Yeah. I was and like, I've never expensive. seen citric acid on a shelf ever. <laughs> oh I, yeah. I never knew what I never even like thought about it at all ever but so until you use that Germany started looking at in both cycles so I use that in the the primary rinse cycle but okay. I actually found that it's um it's pretty harsh as far as like if you accidentally put too much which I've done way too much oh, um, yeah. it can make the cloth really um uh like stiff and a little bit coarse mm. so I for the wash cycle I for for the rinse cycle in the main wash cycle, I use uh, white vinegar because I find oh. that white vinegar also works as a mineral blocker. So you don't get the mineral buildup, but it just is more, it's softer mm -hmm. than it makes the cloth softer. Than the yeah. Cloth. And white vinegar is one of these like strategies that a lot of people uses. And uh, yeah. just my disclaimer to listeners is that I under no good circumstances legally can recommend white vinegar for washing machines, but that's a choice yeah. that you can make based on whatever research that you're having and that there may be, there may or may not be risks depending on your machine. Um, yeah. 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 Because of the rubber seal and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I know I was, I'm working on writing a book and I'm like, every time I look at like wash routine device, I was like, I legally cannot get in trouble for this. It's a divide. Yeah. It's a topic. Like pretty much every time I'm in like some mom group here, like expect mom group on Facebook yeah. and you know, the, the cloth diaper comes up to a new mom and you know, they're like, give me some advice. And I'm always like, well, this is what I do. And then, you know, you get 10 people that are like, but you shouldn't do that. I'm like, well, you know. And I think like, that's the hardest part about cloth diapering is like finding that yeah. balance and what you should yeah. or shouldn't do. And then just owning and making those decisions for you. Yeah. Like you have to make that decision based on your own research and your own comfort. And I uh, can't really hold other people to that, to make those for you. Wow. Your rinse, your 30 minute rinse, you go to a wash cycle. Mm -hmm. A two an hour mm -hmm. two wash, hour, hour, wash cycle, minutes. two hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. What do you put in there? How many diapers are you washing? Uh, what kind um, of diapers are you washing? <laughs> so my stash is primarily um, flower sack towels, okay. which um, and, and, and there, there aren't flower sack towels in the way that they're like specifically like you can buy in the States. I actually bought some in the States and brought them over. But in Germany, there is because cloth diapering is so much more I don't know mainstream. You can say you could go to a drugstore type store, convenience store where there's a baby section, and they actually sell these flat cotton wo woven cotton, kind of like 
things that that you could use it as a swaddle blanket, mm-hmm. you could use it as a burp rag, you could use it, but they actually are also to be just used as cloth diapers. Cotton pieces of material that yeah. just absorb liquid however you want to absorb it mm-hmm. or keep kids warm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the swaddle blankets are like amazing things that are can, you can use for like so many things when they're tiny, tiny, tiny babies. But anyways, um, so I use that and I put that in, I fold that um, usually I'd get lazy and just do kind of a pad fold, yeah. but sometimes I'll feel, you know, zealous and do like a origami fold or whatever. <laughs> Fancy thing. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I also, so I bought a whole bunch of those from used face uh, from Facebook marketplace, still very expensive. Um, as far as like the resale value and then some prefolds. I do have mm-hmm. some prefolds in my mix, some cotton prefolds. And when I was getting into this and looking into the different types of materials, I decided early on to try to keep all of my inserts, um, natural fibers and cotton is the cheapest compared yeah. to like bamboo or something. So that was a big thing for me. Um, but then of course I put the plastic cover on. So kind of, the well, it. and it probably helps though. Cause you're talking, uh, do you guys have a dryer? We actually just bought a dryer not so many months ago. Okay. So we do have one now. Um, but it's a, it's not this, I, I don't know what it's called, but it's not the same kind of dryer like that's in the U.S. where it has the... It's like vent, a condensing the, unit? The, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we have or one in our like rental suite. water tank you have to empty. Yeah. Yeah. Because we weren't able to vent it out, so... But they're, they're they're slow and they're they're not like mm-hmm. it's not like twenty minutes and you're done. And what I end up usually doing um, with with the drying part is that I usually dry all my uh, inside cloth, and the, if I end up using prefolds in that kind of batch, two day batch, then I usually take those out and like let them line dry to finish because it just takes like three just separate times of pressing the start button. To, convince yeah. your dryer that these are not dry yet <laughs> even though it's like these are dry <laughs> <laughs> so anyways so it washing makes, uh, it makes cloth diapering <laughs> seem super inconvenient and yet there's so many of you doing it like that's kind of crazy it feels crazy to me it's more like like i have a hard enough time convincing people to cloth diaper <laughs> here in canada because of the wash cycle and yet this yeah. stanga that you just told me is beautiful. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but that's also true for our regular clothes too like i yeah. argue with the dryer about can, the clothes I, being dry all the time <laughs> like <laughs> well i was thinking you probably didn't buy a dryer for cloth diapering it was probably because you have no, two children yeah. under two and life yeah. is crazy that is exactly right <laughs> as uh my washing machine and, broke last you know, week winter, and i am swimming it, it, yeah so in the winter and also just not sunny days which in germany um is very seldom that we get a long stretch of like super sunny days um mm-hmm. normally global warming has made that more sunny days now but you know is what it is. So it's so like just drying in general. Um, you know, if it's in the summer, you have to be lucky enough that you have a sunny day, which is not super common. And then you have to in the winter, you either have clothes literally in every free space in your house, or you kind of hang them on all your radiator heaters, or you buy a dryer. That's how I remember our time in Italy. We were there for two yeah. weeks, and uh, just <laughs> I mean, Italy was nice in January, but it was still not drying. Yeah. <laughs> it was still yeah. taking forever yeah. uh yeah. so how many diapers are you washing like how often are you washing because i if i think about that italy machine i got like a day's worth of clothes in there i would i shoot for every i want to say every second or third day probably every third day i don't like to go more than three days just because uh-huh. but you're using the idea of- uh flats and covers so you've just got like yeah. 20 flats and handful of covers 30 yeah. flats and a handful of covers. Uh, yeah, sure. More or less, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like That's that, like, yeah. that seems reasonable. Yeah. I was, I was beginning I mean, to wonder it's... or worry that you were maybe washing or having to wash daily and I was getting a little overwhelmed Mm-mm. over here. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I think because I do covers and flats um, or prefolds that um, they aren't as bulky and there's not as many, feels like at least not as many. Mm-hmm. 
um, to wash. So, uh, so yeah. So, I mean, three days is one wash load, like one, <clears throat> one washer full. Like I have this bucket underneath my changing table and when it gets full, I know that's the capacity of my washer. So I need to wash. Oh, perfect. That's handy. So what would you say in this entire journey of cloth diapering in Germany or wherever has been your biggest struggle? Like what's that one thing that you like almost broke you? Um, Leaks. (laughs) (laughs) It's like trial and error, but every time I would have a leak, um, and like, I remember really early in the beginning, you know, when he was like so tiny, um, I didn't cloth diaper like for the first two or three weeks of his life because I was just like, you know, there, you'd like bring him home and they're so tiny and you're just like, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, but even then, like, you know, when he's like three weeks old and you're putting this like, I even got newborn covers because I was like, these things are huge and it's daunting. And, um, and then they leak and you're just like, oh my God, this is like, now I got to change the diaper and I got to change the clothes Mm -hmm. and it's just so frustrating. But at the same time, he was also leaking out of his disposable diapers. So I don't know if it's just like, I don't know how to put a diaper (laughs) on or, you know, like for whatever reason, I just felt like... In the, and, it, and it was just a learning curve. I mean, now I don't have as many leaks, but they definitely happen. But when they're on a liquid I, diet, I just, it's just like you can't win, no matter what diaper you're yeah. choosing. There, yeah. there's a lot of pee. Yeah, yeah. And the the saving grace of that also was that I have, n- I won't say never, but almost never have had a poop explosion diaper in a cloth diaper. They, yeah. But they happen almost every time I put a disposable on. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, that's the worst. <laughs> the worst experience, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're like, we're going to be out for the day. I'll just do disposable so it's easier. And then they poop out of it. And you're like, why did I think this was easier? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't become any easier. Um, do you think that you just like have a heavy wetter and that was the biggest challenge? Or was it more like fit and yeah, fit? It and also um, the flower sack towels, just um, which I was using primarily in the beginning, were are just not. They just don't no. hold a lot of fluid. I find they're like, very. Um, they're very. The weave isn't dense, and I think that leads to a lot of compression. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and it yeah, just, like it they absorb really quickly, but they're not they good at holding it. Yeah, yeah. So I started layering. Um, more and so like sometimes you know he just has like such a ridiculously bulky diaper but i don't care (laughs) that's okay because now i have my stash that i have and i don't want to spend any more money no that was like that's like that was the biggest reason also like i mean that was my big thing like how can i do this the cheapest way possible and then it kind of became this like fun challenge like i'm just not gonna buy this yeah, exactly. And, you know, I see, like, some people post and, like, I'm in, like, these really big, um, like, Munich mom groups. And, mm-hmm. you know, some people are, like, posting on there, like, I don't, you know, I'm in a bad spot. I can't even afford diapers. And I'm just, like, you you could spend, like, 20 euros and get, a, like, a, a, the basic stash, you know, three covers, however many of these um, cotton flats that you can buy at any drugstore. And you can diaper with that, like wash pretty much every day, but you could do it. Like you really can. And like that, like just motivated me to just like, how cheaply can I do this? And then sometimes that means that I'm using only flats and like the flower sack towels. Okay. So you started cloth diapering like for this crunchy green eco reason. What are you using for your detergent and how are you, how are you getting through that conversation? We talked about the citric acid, but what are you using as your detergent? Um, I use a store bought, store bought, um, eco, um, very plain, like no, no crazy chemicals added, no, uh, scents, no, um, I don't remember what, there was like a list that I like, Uh there's like four things that you kind of try to avoid for, um, detergents, but the ones I do, I do use some that use enzymes. I know that's kind of like a cloth diaper detergent, green mom kind of thing. Some people are like, no, you can't use it. And then I don't know. I, I use it because I am washing poop. So I think that's my one. Sorry. 
RIP yours. <laughs> well, the uh, I was doing the unfortunate thing about enzymes is that like, oh, no, the unfortunate is that we actually need so little enzymes and they're not really able to put so little in that they just put a whole lot in. And it's like, like the enzymes are really, it'd be awesome if we like recapture enzymes and reuse them because they can be reused. It'd be awesome if we could use less. And there's so much interesting things about enzymes um, and how they are, they're kind of like, they help us use less detergent. So is that good? And they help us wash better. So is that good? Like, right. You're weighing all these weird things when you're choosing a detergent. Um, uh, how would you help somebody with, where would you recommend that they go for information that is maybe regional specific for these washing conversations and finding detergents, finding about water and finding about machine use? What was your number so, one resource and experience? So, um, about the water there in, in the state, in Germany, I think state, um, you have they have to report the mineral hardness of your water. So I actually typed in my zip code to this yeah. website and found out how hard my water was in our region. Um, you can, of course, can also like take a water sample and send it off and test it if you want to be super specific to like. I your just Googled exact it for my quality. area as well and I got a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like plus or minus. This is, this is about what we're dealing with. Yeah. Um, the, my machine, I actually looked up the manual for the machine and I literally read uh the manual like what each cycle did and i cycle that treated the cloth the way i wanted to treat it which is okay. like i don't hey, know I kind that's of, like, like that's really, really like, awesome like, simple advice though so. like studying oh. yeah no i, I mean I honestly learned more about laundry because of cloth diapering than I've ever learned about laundry before. And now I feel like I actually wash my clothes better than I've ever washed them before. Yeah. Probably. Because of cloth diapering. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but, and your and manual has for, so much good information in it. It really does. It really yeah. does. It's kind of interesting. I mean, I don't know. If you are and if you guys are listening and you have no idea where your manual is, you can pretty much Google them. Oh, yeah. Mo- I just Googled it. As far as resource, um, I mean, cloth diaper, Facebook groups. Um, mm-hmm. I like I got in, I, I, like when I was going to build my stash, I found like a uh, cloth diaper group that was in German. Um, and then as far as like trying to decide my wash routine, like I said, like I first did all this Googling on all these US based mm-hmm. blogs, but then once I kind of started really needing to adapt what I like figure out something I needed to, wanted to do for like living in Germany and our washer and what detergents and green resource, you know, alternatives I could use. I went to some websites that are, um, that are all in German, but were helpful, like kind of local websites. And there's, uh, if that overwhelms you. And I think when I chatted with, uh, Kelsey, there's always Google Translate, guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I still... If there's some one last piece of suggestion, advice that you would love to impart on someone today, what would it be, Stacey? Um, you know, I think that it, it, when I first wanted to do cloth diapering with my first son, I just got so overwhelmed. And I don't think, and, and I was almost... I don't know, embarrassed or something because it's, there's such a stigma about cloth diapering and and it's either you're in it and the stigma is like, you're awesome or you're out of it. And the stigma is like, you're crazy. Why would you do that? (laughs) And I was so overwhelmed by like that stigma of like, you're crazy. Why would you do that? That I just gave up really quickly. And the second time around when I, when I was pregnant with my second and my, you know, my son is still only 26 months old. Like he's still very much in diapers. Um, so when he was like 20 months old, I started do, looking back into it and just started asking questions in mom groups where I felt I had a lot of friends and people just came forward and was, and, you know, you just kind of like learn a lot of stuff from, from people that you feel comfortable with. So I actually never even heard of flats or flower sack towels or covers. I had only known that, you know, cloth diapering was this like big chunky diaper that costs like $30 for one diaper and you need like 25 of them. And so it's this huge investment and this huge thing and all that just really overwhelmed me. So 
um, just like not really, I don't know, just, just don't give up. Don't fall into the trap of overwhelm. Like, yeah. Too. Um, or the stigma. I mean, if yeah. you want to do it, then do it. I mean, my, my husband still like hates cloth diapering, but somehow I found a way. To, yeah. You to don't do really it. need anybody else's <laughs> approval, but like your own. Yeah. You just, yeah. 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 You don't. I mean, sometimes people ask, well, so-and-so doesn't agree with it. And you're like, why does it really matter? Does it really matter that so-and-so doesn't agree with it? Right. Can you still do right. it? Yeah, you can. Right. Right. You, um, uh, and with the online world, if you need support somewhere else, you can find it somewhere else. Too. Yeah. So st- uh, stizzle for Rizzle. <laughs> okay. I think I just found you. I was trying to Instagram oh, you. And I was like, uh, who are you? St-? She's, uh, I'll include that link in the show notes if you guys awesome. are listening. Um, and I'll tag her here on Instagram whenever this episode goes live. Okay, that was a pretty awesome conversation, if I do say so myself. I was so thrilled to be able to chat with Stacy, be able to think about her experience, think about my experience, think about North America, think about Germany, and think about all the different ways that we can do things. There are lots of different ways to cloth diaper, and you need to find the way that works best for you. There's also a lot of different advice out there on the web about vinegar, about citric acid, about the risks to your machine, about the risks to rubber. Um, and you need to take a moment and consider those and make those decisions for you. Those decisions are not on anybody else. And if you decide to do that, there may be risks involved and there may not be risks. Uh, you, again, like really it's about just making individual decisions for you. And I know that sounds real really scary, but you are amazing. And you have that power to make a choice and to say, hey, the risks outweigh or the benefits outweigh, I'm going to make this decision because Um, I think sometimes maybe in finding like the ultimate perfect thing, we get caught up in these weird cycles of I can't do this, I can't do that. But you can do whatever you feel is right for you and your family as uh, just make that empowered choice. Cloth diapering is something that really does vary. And it was really interesting listening to her talk about citric acid. And I'm going to be on Google learning a little bit more about citric acid over the weeks to come because I just had never thought about it. But I also don't really know if there's any risks involved when it comes to rubbers or washing machines or if it's okay. Um, so do that research and make sure that whatever decision that you're making, you're comfortable with if there's any consequences, I guess would be the right thing. Um, and it sounds like Stacy has done the research and she is comfortable with that choice. And that is amazing being comfortable and empowered in your own choice. The cloth ever podcast, again, a regular show brought to you by me and today's episode which I can't believe I'm just like adding it here at the outro was edited by a fan. So Jenny Driscoll is um, a local mama who I guess is a cloth diaper mom who reached out to me and said, Hey, I would love to try and edit your podcast show for you because she knows that I had a lot of problems with the last edited version. And so here's hoping that it goes well. Um, and maybe I have a new somewhat regular editor. You can find the show notes for this episode at clothdiverpodcast.com. Find me on the web at Cloth Diver Podcast. And if you enjoy the Cloth Diver Podcast, please take a moment to leave a review. Reviews are awesome. They're really helpful for bringing on brands and getting more amazing clients on. Again, Anybody can be a guest on the Cloth Ever Podcast. I will probably be looking for people with stories about the flats and hand washing challenge, as that will be our next big project that I'm ramping up for. So if you have a flats and hand washing challenge or a flats and hand washing or a hand washing story to share, drop them to my inbox now. Uh, I would like to get those recorded in March and released in April for May's challenge. All right. Until next time.